Isaac is wearing the cone of shame back there. I don't know if you caught it. Yeah, I know. Life's tough, buddy. All right, I'm wearing this little, uh, you know, tell a salesperson uh, headset so that I can turn around and talk to you and give you this update. Uh, about a month ago, I put a very vague picture on the Instagram page for Kinograph that said April 4th with nothing more. Uh, this was, for me, a sort of dart into the future as to, like, let's get it done. And um, we got very, very close to that. So what was supposed to be a ta-da is now sort of like almost. <laughs> and so I hope that you will uh, be as excited as I am about the progress that we've made. Um, and I say we because there are some we in here. Um, and I'll get to that. So let's just get right to it. Um, this The past month has been an intense one. As you all know, nothing happens in a vacuum. A lot of life <laughs> happened in this last month, but also a lot of work got done too. And it was a lot of uh, a lot of hours with Kinograph. Um, a few things went up in literal smoke, um, but we also got some things working. So I, I want to tell you what I'm most proud of. The two things that I'm most proud of are that we are closer than ever to a permanent design, meaning a design that makes sense for most people and works consistently. And then secondly, I'm most proud of, of bringing people together around this project, both in the building of the project and preparing for its life in the real world. And I'll tell you about both of those as well. So highlights. Um, let's get right right to the mess of the thing. Poor Isaac. This is just comedy for you all. Uh, or tragedy, depending on your point of view. I think for him, it's definitely tragedy. But he's making the most of it, you know? Life may give you a cone, but you can still sniff, right? Sniff. Oh, don't bite. No. <laughs> Uh, improved the frame. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice uh, horizontal supports now on here uh, with additional anchors on the front that uh, tie in these panels to the frame, and that makes it much more rigid um, vertically, so there's no more buckling of uh, the acrylic. And I've also split the frames as well. So if you make a change on the, the film path stuff on the bottom, you don't have to redo this entire panel. You just have to redo this panel. So it's saving me 50% in acrylic costs uh, and time and all of that stuff. Um, so it just pops off and you pop the new one on, which is really great. So that's really nice. The capstan design um, has been improved and I'll do a little update on that in just a sec. Uh, the new tension arm design, I'll also show you that. Uh, there are two working prototypes. This one, uh, which uses a motor system that is semi-open uh, source called O-Drive. It's a robotics company and um, they have some really great uh, features in their system that make it a, a really good candidate for us. So uh, Robin uh, or Rabino, if you are on the forums, has a machine working with this system and I'm sort of recreating what he's doing in a slightly different way and we're working together to make that work. Uh, we're also The second prototype is same frame, same everything else, same brain. Uh, no, it's a different brain. Th never mind. <laughs> but it uses a different motor system is the, the main reason um, that there is a different one. That's more generic. You can use any motor, brush, brushless, uh, any make, model, whatever. Um, and the driver is kind of up to you too, meaning the circuit board that is used to send it power. Um, and so the flexibility is very attractive there and we're going to continue to work on that. That requires um, some more mechanical parts, and that's kind of what slowed us down. Um, we just need to get those dialed in uh, for it to really work. They're created. They've been installed. Um, we're just seeing some uh, unexpected behavior, and I'm waiting on some new parts that I think will solve that. So that brings me to collaborations. When I say new parts, Shout out to Jeff in California for sending me uh, the parts that he has been finding on uh, Chinese websites. They are fantastic. They are super well built and solve some problems that parts from the US were, were just not solving. And um, uh, Robin and all of his time with me uh, trying to walk me through this O-Drive system and get me up and running has been extremely generous. Jeff in the UK spent a lot of time with me showing me his machine that he's been working on uh, and has done things I would never have thought of that are really fun and amazing. 
Uh, can't wait for him to be in a place where he's ready to show that uh, to everybody else. John in New York City, um, thank you for all your time talking to uh, me and the pilot partners uh, about your wor digital workflow after a scan. Um, same to Robin for you doing the same. Um, it's just so fun for me to see people from all over the world get together and talk about how they're approaching this problem that they're passionate about in slightly different ways that all are you know, achieving the same goal. Uh, that is the whole point of the project. So I love that. Do you want to sh show me? Oh, that's, that's so sad. So we also have some new um, capstan designs that are still in progress, but I wanted to show you what's been going on. Um, so what exists? This exists in the real world. This is the uh, particle transfer roller made by Kodak. These are very expensive. You can only buy them six at a time. You can only buy them from Kodak. There are some other resellers out there, but not very many. Uh, they're just, the point is there aren't very many places to buy PTR rollers and they can charge whatever the heck they want. And if they decide to stop making them, well then we're out of luck. Uh, then there's this company, um, FX Systems uh, or FX Sys from the UK. They are no longer in business, but they do have back stock and they make small and large rollers um, independently. They also have metal cores, and this is just some of my own um, 3D printed hub design uh, around it. So yeah, you could, you could go find some rollers, um, but we have no control over that, um, that whole system, and it seems like a, I don't know, a, a marketplace of rarities, and that makes me nervous. So Jeff from California, uh, I'm just cleaning this off because it's embarrassingly dirty, found a company that um, here in the U.S. that makes sleeves of uh, material that is extremely similar to Kodak's and FX systems. And so I've created a couple of different uh, prototypes that are easily 3D printable uh, without a lot of supports or anything like that, using common materials to hold them together. Um, that will allow you to uh, take this sleeve and just put it over them nice and tight so that it doesn't slip. And then this whole thing kind of bolts on to um, a shaft that is turned by our capstan motor. So the nice thing about this is you don't even have to take the whole roller off when you need to clean it. You just pull off the sleeve, go wash it, let it dry, pop it back on, and they're cheap. This whole thing, 3D printing included, you know, heavy metal hardware included, uh, with the sleeve will cost you about $7. That's incredible. Last time I bought these, these were like 75 bucks a piece. I think they're like $90 a piece now or something like that. Um, there is something about them, though, that is special, and that is uh, something I found out through Google Patent Search. Inside of this material... Uh, is a additive that allows it to be anti-static. And that is good for film processing because it um, repels dust and things that would make your film dirty. Uh, and the way it's able to do that is it needs an electrical charge. So that's why it's on an aluminum hub. It clicks onto a metal hub. That hub is connected to... Um, electricity, and that's how it works. So I'm also working on ways to transmit electricity from a shaft to a 3D printed um, device. I found some conductive 3D printed material, so I'm going to test that out. And then there's also, you know, really basic stuff like using uh, metal parts from robotics companies and just including them on here and transferring as long as that touches, you know, in some way touches our our uh, thing here, then that will work. So, great. What am I going to do? Peel this off and use it? No. I found a manufacturer taking Jeff's cue. I was like, oh, there's a whole world of people that make <laughs> flexible plastics out there, and sent them our requirements, and they are making three prototypes. There's going to be one just like this with an aluminum core, with the groove, with this kind of material, although not see-through, because apparently that costs more, and the electrostatic additive. And they're going to cost, I think, like $60 a piece, um, but we'll see. And it matches the, you know, the, the hardness of this and everything, and it would be completely uh, feasible to use one of those on any machine that takes a Kodak PTR. 
So I don't know, maybe we're getting in the manufacturing business, uh, but that price point still isn't great, right? So the other thing we're gonna try is without the aluminum hub and just this out, outer ring, cause that brings down the price a bit. But in case that that still doesn't do it, I've also asked them to create a sleeve for us, like just like this with the anti-static property. Um, so you can go make one of a $7 um, roller like this right now, and it'll only cost you $7. And guess what? It works just fine. If, however, you are finding that your environment or your prints just have a lot of dust on them and it's or you're just like want to be extra careful we'll have an anti-static version i don't think it's required for everyone though so that's capstan now we talked about the tension control on the generic machine i mentioned that uh jeff out in california had created and i've showed it many times before i disassembled it so i can't show you now but he machine he's a mechanic and a machinist and he machined um a tension hub basically if i don't know if you remember some of you may remember that rotary one that i had made years ago well he found um a way to use these uh load cell sensors which are used in um, scales like weight scales and basically they can determine sort of the flex here in the middle of what's going on so if it's got a stiff spring on one side and we're attached to a shaft on the other imagine this being in the back of the machine and this is sort of the front of the machine right so while you're going around this in your film path and then when the tension changes on the machine this little this roller is going to go up and down right that is transferred through this shaft to this arm it goes like this that signal is picked up by its uh, driver board and that goes to uh, the microcontroller and then we can say hey we got to speed up or slow down uh, based on that. So this is, I'm just showing you this as an adapted version of a machined aluminum part, which may be difficult for some people to recreate. If you only have the internet and a 3D printer, you can recreate this one by buying the parts, the screws, and then 3D printing everything else like this bracket, uh, the rollers here, uh, the mount for the sensor itself. And um, yeah, so that's working pretty well. There's a couple things uh, that need to be improved on this uh, because there are some parts that are slipping or are too flexible and that's causing the readings to be a little less um, reliable than they need to be. So I don't think it's going to be a hard fix. It's just going to take time to dial in correctly. <laughs> Cone of shame. So let's let's take a second and say, okay, where where are we? What's working? Uh, What's working, there's a lot of things that are really working well. Uh, our design principles continue to make decision making uh, easy and effective. Um, and it's really keeping the whole project in a box that um, is going to benefit everyone. And if that sounds vague to you, uh, take a look at the link at the design principles. And these are things uh, that help us make decisions about what solutions are the ones we're going to spend time on, money on. Um, and that that will be true for the life of the project. And so I think those have stood up with the countless decisions and options that have presented themselves in a really good way. So I'm, I'm proud of those and I think they're working really well. Lighting, uh, lighting is looking great. Pablo and his, um, well, I don't know if Pablo's working great, but Pablo's circuit is working great. And uh, the, the lights are really wonderful and the, the integration sphere is working really well. Um, the frame system is working really well. I like the parts have been dialed in for that for a long time, just using this extruded aluminum, the kinds of nuts and bolts we're using, um, using bolts, you know, in general for rollers, the 3D printed rollers, um, all of that. So I'm really happy with how that's working. So we have a really solid skeleton that doesn't, isn't likely to change very much. Our code is actually at the best it's ever been, by far. Uh, we've got two major code versions going on, and one um, is for the generic, and one is for the O drive, and they both have features that, um, when combined, are going to be amazing. Also, our workflow is looking really good. Uh, Robin and John both got on a call with our pilot partner, Third World Newsreel, to show them what they do after the machine is finished to get to a working movie file that is shareable, watchable. So what's next?
Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Basically, we're going to continue with this O drive direction because I have support. Uh, I've got Robin and he's making a machine with the same system. We can share information and it speeds everything up. We, I have this working. Uh, it moves film left to right. It has a light on. Uh, it is detecting sprocket holes. The last thing I have to do is hook it up to the camera, get the optics right, and make sure that our code is solid. Um, and then test, 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 test. And if that works, then that's it. Then I will ship it to uh, our pilot partners and help them set it up get them going, and then create a feedback system where I can check in on them, find out what's working for them, what they want to throw out the window out of frustration, and improve, improve, improve. Uh, once we have all of those notes and I continue sort of polishing things on the machine end while we put together the software and the workflow, sort of all of those are going to kind of come together at one and, and make, you know, as I don't know where I was going with that. All of that will come together, and that will be the public release of Kinograph in its official non-beta version. That will be its its real self. Its true self will be out in the world. Isaac doesn't like the girl. He doesn't like it. Lastly, I just want to make a note to anybody who is doing a project even remotely like this. It may not be a hardware project. It may be somebody you know trying to write a play or an album or the perfect sourdough recipe. This shit is hard. <laughs> Don't let yourself forget that what you're doing is hard because you deserve credit for just showing up. Get good at seeing you showing up as the measure of your success. I keep forgetting it. I keep thinking, oh, you failed to meet this deadline. It's not working yet. Someone else would have done it by now. There's someone else smarter than there. It's this imposter syndrome met with this glorious expectation of what will happen uh, if I just say that I want it bad enough. Well, if I've learned anything is that deadlines and expectations are giving the gods a really good chuckle. <laughs> Life is going to happen and that's okay. If you're doing something like this, Find what makes you happy, accept that showing up is enough, and just keep going. Um, your curiosity is worth your time and your energy. And if it is making you feel alive like it does for me, then that should be the only measure of your success. Are you showing up with curiosity? Good. You did a great job. That's all you have to keep doing. And as someone reminded me uh, yesterday, a very good friend of mine said, Little by little, growth happens. That's how our bodies improve. That's how plants grow. <laughs> you know, that's how we become smarter. That's how these projects happen. Little by little, progress happens. And my friends, we are making progress happen. So stay tuned. I can't wait um, to give you the next update because I think it's going to be a real good one. And if not, it's not because we didn't show up. <laughs>